Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I am um, filming in a different place just because the light is really fading outside and so I have to sit facing a window to so in my bedroom at the moment. Um, today I was thinking about what to make a video about and I decided to make a video about library books because I am kind of drowning in library books at the moment and not prioritising them even though I should be because there's just so many things to read isn't there so I thought if I talk about these library books hopefully it will make me want to pick them up more quickly and also maybe some of you guys have read them and you can tell me like that I need to read them immediately so I'm just gonna grab them in a random order some of them you all have seen recently some of them you won't because I've had them for so long so let's start with the first one next to me which is Flames by Robbie Arnott. The reason I got this book was because I read The Rain Heron last year and really enjoyed it and I know that Flames is his first book. Um, he is an Australian author and um, this book is about a, um, a brother and sister who their mum dies and a few days, I believe, after she's died, they see her back to life walking across the garden and then she bursts into flames. Um, and I think the boy is worried that this is going to happen to his sister when she dies. So he decides to build her a fireproof coffin for when she dies. And I think she kind of freaks out and escapes. And um, yes, so um, it's like magical realism, like the rain heron. And um, I'm hoping that I enjoy this just as much, if not more. So that's the first one. The next one I really want to read, but the only reason I haven't read it yet, which is a pathetic excuse, is because the writing is tiny in it. But this is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This might be a good one to actually get on audiobook, especially if she reads it herself. This is a non-fiction memoir about um, 2016 when Chanel was on campus at which university? Stanford University and she got sexually assaulted by a man called Brock Turner and he was only sentenced to six months in jail after he was caught and her witness statement was viewed by 11 million people in four days online and this is basically a book about how it comes um the law comes down on the side of the perpetrators against women um more than it does for the women themselves and fails to protect us um and so this is supposed to be a, a, a very extraordinary book even though i'm guessing it's going to be quite a anger inducing and sad and emotional read um I think it's really important to know Chanel's story because she's obviously a very courageous and brave woman for um, coming and writing this book. So that is that one. Next one is a Japanese book, which is Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagawa, translated by Alison Watts. I yeah, translated by Alison Watts. So this is a book about... Um, a man who was dreaming of being a writer but I think his life's gone a little bit awry he's drinking too much I think he's got a, maybe some like criminal acts in the past and he's got a job making these pancakes filled with sweet bean paste and um, he's not very happy and then he meets this elderly Japanese lady who um, makes the best sweet bean pancakes around and she um, becomes friends with him and it's about loneliness and friendship but also I believe she has a really dark secret which comes out and then changes everything so I'm all the Japanese translations that I've read in the last year or two have been really good so I'm really looking forward to reading that one then we have um, You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This is a YA book which is about a girl called Liz and she has um plans to go to a fancy college and escape the town that she's grown up in but she said that she's always believed she's too black too poor and too awkward to shine and then she um finds out that her school um gives a scholarship to the prom king and prom queen for um university and she has never wanted to be prom queen but she decides that she best um suck it up anyway and um go for it to try and get the scholarship and um there's a girl called mac 
who's new to the school and she try she sort of helps make everything bearable for Liz but she's also running for prom queen so it's about sort of the conflict between um, them being friends and rivals at the same time so yes that's that one the next book is one that I got from the library on recommendation of Karen Evans um, who is raving reader on booktube and she recommended me this book of essays which is I Miss You When I Blink by Mary Laura Philpott so these essays are written um, about the fact that she um ticked off all the things in her life that she always thought she would do like um you know getting an education buying a property getting married having kids and then she just didn't feel contented after she'd done all those things and so she decided basically um it says that this book affirms that multiple things can be true of us at once and that sometimes doing things wrong is the way to do life right um so She's kind of just writing essays about those things, I believe. Um, I trust Karen's recommendations and it's nice to um, find a book that I know nothing about that someone else has recommended to me and, like I said, trust her judgment. The next book is one by a booktuber, Lucy Powery, um, which I found in the library and this is called The Paper and Heart Society. It's a YA book about a bookish girl who doesn't really fit in. She's a bit of an introvert and doesn't really want to go out to parties and things like that that uh, her peers are doing. She'd much rather be home with a book. I think we can probably relate to that. Um, and she then meets a, a book group um, but she's kind of, I think, socially awkward and um, is even sort of a bit worried about what could go wrong with a bit club. But I think she joins it and then um, it looks like there's four other people that she joins with and it says, can she let her weird out and live the best bookish life possible? I think this is the first and maybe a trilogy. I don't know how many books there are, but I've had this on my sort of radar for quite a long time. So it's nice when I saw it in the library to pick it up. The next book is courtesy of um jen campbell who talks about this series of books pretty much i'd say on every booktube video that she makes and um this is the first in the frida klein series it's called blue monday by nikki french who are a husband and wife writing team and um this is a crime series i may have just said that just two seconds ago um I think this is about a missing child, which always makes me nervous. Um, Frida Klein is a thera psychotherapist who helps the police to solve um, some crimes. Um, but I trust Jen's recommendations, and she loves Nikki French so much. She's read every single one of their books, and she said she's reread this series over and over again. So I had to just get it when I saw it in the library because, um, you know. I've never heard a book so highly recommended, I don't think, by the same person. The next book I have had, very shamefully, since the first lockdown, which means it's coming up for two years that I've had this book out. And I don't even know how I've managed to get away with having it out that long, apart from, I guess, for ages, the library didn't ask you to renew stuff, it just renewed it for you. So this is one that I really want to read. So, like, what the heck is wrong with me? <laughs> this is... A Sh the Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks, A Tale of the Lake District. This is non-fiction, it's his memoir about what it's been like for him and generations of his family to grow up in the Lake District, which is a very um, popular holiday destination in Britain and um, lots of people go there for um, walking holidays and things like that. And um, I think it's just about um, yeah what it's like for him to sort of be of that landscape and to have lots of other people coming to the landscape and not necessarily knowing about it or respecting it and things um so yeah I just I can't remember where I came across this book but um I think I might have I think it might have been on like a Waterstones book of the year quite a while ago but then I listened to the audio sample and really liked it so yes that's why I've got that one I then have another non-fiction book which is um by an author who I love, an author who I love, I do love him as an author, but he's also a TV personality that I love. Um, this is Guy Martin's latest book. Well, I think it's his latest book. He might have one more out by now called We Need to Weaken the Mixture. So Guy Martin is a motorbike racer who um, was in the um, Isle of Man TT for a long time. And he, since he's retired from his motorbike racing career, he still works as a truck mechanic. And he... Um, does lots of 
things to do with engineering and also like speed and stunts and stuff like that in the UK and he's often like has um sort of TV miniseries I really like him as a person so like the things he writes about in this book um are restoring a Formula One car from 1983 and racing Jensen Button helping to build a first world war tank racing in his last ever TT um standing on top of Chernobyl's nuclear reactors and saving his local local pub from closure and becoming a dad um so this is i think the third or fourth book i've read by him he writes memoirs kind of in sections and um i love i love these books and um, my son is called guy partly because he's not named after guy martin but i, I think that's why i started liking the name and also when i was in labor no he wasn't in labor when i was waiting for my um cesarean for guy um i was reading one of his other books and that kind of cemented my love of the name so yeah <laughs> so yeah that's uh that's that one a bit niche for some people on book two probably but i like going item i then have another book which was recommended by jen campbell and um i heard her talk about it a couple of times and thought yes i really want to read this one so this book was written in 1943 and this is The House Opposite by Barbara Noble. Um, this is, so Barbara Noble lived through the Blitz in London and this is when um, this book is set. So obviously um, a very first-hand account because she's been through that herself. And it's about a, um, a woman called Elizabeth Simpson. She's a secretary who's having an affair with her boss who is married. Um, her dad is an air raid warden. Her mum is using alcohol to try and com- calm her nerves during all of the bombing raids. Um, it talks about her teenage neighbour and um, a soldier that she has a um, a romance with. And it's like um, life, basically a, a drama of life in the Blitz. Yeah, that one came highly recommended by Jen as well. The next ones I've mentioned really recently because they are for stuff that I'm doing at the moment. So the first one is um, graphic novel Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughan, Cliff Chang, Matt Wilson and Jared Fletcher. This is the first in a series. I got this out for the, um, now that's what I call Summer Readathon, which is hosted by um, roving reader Karen and um, soggy expat book nerd Heather. And this is um, set in the 1980s. It's about four um, four girls who are paper girls, so newspaper delivery girls, um, and basically they uncover a story and it says it's a suburban drama and supernatural mystery in a smash hit series about nostalgia first jobs and the last days of childhood and i'll just show you the drawings are very love the color scheme whoops so i'm looking forward to that i haven't read enough graphic novels so then the last two are the ones that i got for my next book group the first is the gallows pole by benjamin myers which is a book about Um, It's a historical novel, but based on real events about a group of um, sort of, I think, working class people, land workers and weavers who decide to do clipping, which is coin forgery, forgery in um, the north of England. And that is punishable by death. And so it's basically um, been uh, assembled from historical accounts and legal documents, a true story of resistance and a rarely told alternative history of the North. So that's my next book club choice. And then the month after that is one, another crime um, series, the first in a crime series set in North Norfolk. And this is The Crossing Places by Ellie Griffiths. This is set um, in the present times, I believe. And... um, yeah, they discover some children's bones or a child's bones in North Norfolk and they think it might be the child from a missing case from about 10 years ago. Um, but then the police officer investigating starts getting these like really creepy messages and also another child's bones are found. Or another child is missing, actually. Um, and there's a um, forensic archaeologist, Dr Ruth Galloway, who is getting sort of threatened, I think, as well. So... Um, yeah so that's the last one so I don't even know how many that is that is too many library books to have had out for such a long time so I need to prioritize these because I think um, over Christmas I was wanting to read like a certain type of book and then in January so far I've been doing there now that's what I call summer readathon so I've also 
got loads of books that I'm really excited about recently. I'm thinking about books that have been on my TBR for too long and whether I want to actually read them or pass them on. That's another thing that I'm trying to decide. So it just feels like sport for choice at the moment. Um, not quite sure where to start, so help please. <laughs> I'm just popping back in here because I just finished this video, packed my stuff away and then found out that I have three more books which I have forgotten about. So um, if the background angle or anything looks slightly different that will be why. The first one was one that I ordered because Jessie of Bix and Bowties recommended this as it was one of their favourite books of the year. And this is called How Beautiful We Were by Imbolo Mabue. Um, this is set in a fictional country in Africa and it focuses on environmental destruction and catastrophic health consequences for the residents of this um, country when an American oil company um, arrive and start um, digging up or digging for oil and ruining everything in the country and um, there is I believe a dictatorship in power which isn't really helping to do anything and um, the people decide to um, take action themselves and it has sort of consequences which last for generations and so this book sounds absolutely fascinating and I'm really grateful for Jessie's recommendation for that one. And the other two are on order, but I haven't actually got them yet, which is why I forgot about them. Um, the first one, I'm really afraid I cannot remember the author's names, but I will put them up on the screen because I'll put a picture in the corner. Um, the first one is um, the Hopkins Manuscript. And this is a book that I saw on Jen's channel and thought it sounded really good at the time. And then she actually added it to her favourite books of the year. And this is a book, I think it's set in the future it was written quite a long time ago like maybe it was written about 50 years ago or something and it's set in a future where um i think there's been like a collision with planet earth with an asteroid or something like that and our life as we know it has been changed and it's about the diary of a man that was found um who is Hopkins, who is quite an arrogant person, I believe. And it's about sort of his thoughts on life as in the time when life as we know it existed. Um, and I think it's kind of a bit satirical and quite funny. And um, Jen really loved it. So again, I've ordered that one. And the next one was also her recommendation. And that was The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. And um, this one is a collection of short stories about a um, group of women and the intersection in their lives with um, between sort of religion and their lives and their beliefs and their dilemmas and tribulations and things like that and um, I believe it's being made into a film I'm pretty sure Jen said that um, but yeah so the, the way she's talked about it each time has made me really want to read it so that one is also on order and again I apologise that I can't remember the authors but I will put their name up in the in the area over here. So if any of you have read any of these books and want me to push them up to the top of my list then please tell me. If you have read anything else like by these authors or anything then you know and you think that I should hurry along and read them then uh, yeah prompt me push me into picking them up um and uh tell me yeah if there's any um I was gonna say if there's any recommendations based on those but actually that's probably a bad idea because then I'll just end up with a bigger part of books from the library but anyway tell me any bookish news that you have anything you've been reading and enjoying recently or just say hello um it's um I wish you all a very nice week and I'll speak to you soon bye